This is News and Views for March 18th, 2016. I'm Don Ed Kisson. Well, it's been an interesting week uh, this week. You know, Tuesday we had, what was it, four or five states, and I even talked about that earlier this week, um, where unfortunately it looked like that, for whatever reason, whatever the reason happened to be, Hillary Clinton actually wound up gaining some additional delegates. Uh, she she pretty much won four or five states, if not more. Uh, even though those of us that support Bernie Sanders, hashtag feel the burn, uh, had high hopes that, uh, you know, not necessarily a, a sweep, but at least have a better showing than he did. But with all that said, it's it's not completely over just yet. Um, I'd like to take your attention back to the uh, presidential race of 2008. For the longest time, it looked like that Hillary Clinton was going to be the nominee for the Democratic Party. And it wasn't until June, pretty much, that a first-term senator, a little upstart by the name of Barack Obama, actually pulled it out and and uh, overtook her and eventually became the nominee and, of course, as we all know, the very first black president of the United States. That into itself was phenomenal. Uh, but unfortunately, I think what we've got here is a situation where Hillary Clinton doesn't really give a damn about the issue. She doesn't really give a damn about the country. I don't believe she really gives a damn about the people in the country. All Hillary Clinton really gives a damn about is becoming the very first female president. I believe that is her goal, uh, and her goal is to have a legacy, and part of that legacy is to be the very first woman president. Now, that's a lofty goal. I don't have a problem with that, and if her actual policies and ideology on a lot of things was closer to what I believe, and a lot of people believe, the way the country should be run, which is Bernie Sanders, pretty much, then uh, it, it, it would actually be what I would consider a twofer. We could get a highly um, progressive, for the people, candidate in there to hopefully become president, and set another precedent by having the very first female president of the United States. And then, of course, the the next step of breaking the mold would be <laughs> the first black female president. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Point is, here we are sitting past the midpoint of March. And... You know, don't count Bernie out yet. Don't don't count him out yet. Um, unfortunately, Barack Obama himself, and it's come. This has come out this week. Behind closed doors in Austin, last Friday evening, he started. Uh, he he basically told supporters, "You uh, you need to get behind Hillary Clinton. You know, Bernie's run is over." And you need to get behind Clinton, and that's that's very unfortunate, and it, it it's it's very it's very disappointing, very disappointing. Um, I can only think that possibly the only reason why that he would do this is because Bernie Sanders is still an independent; he just happens to caucus and be running uh, for the nomination of the Democratic Party simply. I mean, let's think about it. If if he was running as an independent specifically, so we had Republican and then we had Democrat and then we had independent, unfortunately, Sanders wouldn't have a chance in hell. And I know there's a lot of you out there that are going, well, Don, he doesn't have a chance in hell now. Well, that's not true. I mean, you look at the math and then, of course, we get in this whole super delegate bullshit. And we've talked about that. Um Talk about one of the most illegal-looking, but not necessarily illegal methodologies 
trying to stack the deck for a presidential win. Holy crap, superdelegates. But, um, you know, Sanders is doing what Sanders has to do. His best bet is to be an independent but run on the uh, within the Democratic Party to become the Democratic nominee so that he can go up against, unfortunately, what may be the Republican nominee. And that all really depends on the contested convention because that's pretty much a given that that's what's going to happen. I mean, even though Rubio has just dropped out. So now it's down to Trump, Cruz, and Kasich. And, of course, there's a possibility that Kasich could actually wind up being the nominee. I say a possibility, but it really all depends on how this contested convention plays out in in July. So I guess the point that I'm trying to make in this little tidbit of rambling here is it, it may look insurmountable, but that mountain is not as high as it looks like when it comes to the potentiality of Bernie Sanders becoming the nominee, the, the nominee for the Democratic Party. I, I still firmly believe in my heart of hearts that uh, it's possible. And not only is it possible, it is badly needed, badly needed, because <clears throat> we don't need another four years of Barack Obama's policies. And we definitely don't need four years of a dumbass like Donald Trump in office. I mean, the United States is already suffering uh, an image issue. If you have a leader like Donald Trump as the leader of the free world, holy shit, you might as well just not be free. That's, that's all I'm saying about that. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about real quickly is, and I believe I've also uh, brought this up, is it seems like even though they made some adjustments, this damn religious freedom bill in, in Georgia, which I happen to be located in South Central Georgia, is moving forward. And even though uh, Governor Nathan Dill himself, he is a Republican. He's a Republican, Republican governor of a Southern state. And of course, you know, Southern states have a tendency to be what? Republican and Christian. And that's the reason why they're called right-wing Christians. And sometimes, depending on how they act, they are honestly right-wing Christian nuts. In this particular instance, though, I have to, uh, I have to applaud Governor Nathan Deal because even though he's a Republican and he's a Baptist, he's, he's not for this law. He's, uh, he's actually citing his, uh, citing his own Christian faith, saying that we do not have a belief in my way of looking at religion that says that we have to discriminate against anybody. So it looks like that if this bill gets to his desk, which I'm fairly confident that's where it's headed, he's going to veto it. And we're talking about House Bill 757. Unfortunately, I believe there's enough votes that if he does veto it, it's it's going to get uh his veto is going to get overruled, which is very very sad because I had, you know, I posted some stuff this morning on my Facebook page about this, and and I keep coming back to this the same thing. Look, number one, you know, your religious freedom. Your right to believe and practice what it is that you want to practice as far as your faith, your religious convictions, whatever, is already protected by the best document that we have on the planet, and that is the Constitution of the United States. And in the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, you have the freedom of speech and the freedom of religion. And what that that simply means is that you are free to worship however you wish. The government cannot impede your ability to worship however you wish. Now, with that said, that doesn't mean that your belief system can be utilized to encroach upon the rights and freedoms of others. 
And I made this point this morning. You, you make a choice when you go into business. We have anti-discrimination laws in this country. Those laws were a long time coming and hard fought so that we can do our damnedest to get away from discrimination. You know, we don't want to discriminate against anyone due to their color or their sex, their gender, color of their hair. I mean, that, that's just it. We are human beings. When you get right down to it, we all bleed the same. We all have the same organs. We are human beings. This outside is nothing but a shell. It is how we present ourselves and how we are seen to the rest of the world. We had no rhyme or reason or choice to the matter of how we came, <laughs> came out of the womb. We had no choice in the matter as to our lineage, the parents that we have. What really counts is right here, inside. We are all the same. We have bones. We have muscles. We have a heart. We have lungs, kidneys, a liver. Females have a uterus and a vagina. Males have penis and testicles. We're the same. So there's no rhyme or reason for discrimination. So when, you know, whenever you decide to go into business, you make a choice. And the choice is you go into business to, to provide a service or provide goods to the public. Now, you can, you can niche it down. You can focus and say, okay, I'm, my business is I'm a business-to-business type business. I'm only going to cater to companies that do X, Y, Z, or I provide accounting services to the agricultural industry. You know, you can niche it down like that if you want to. However, what you cannot do, even in that particular vein, is if you decide that you've got 100 clients, you're providing accounting services to 100 agricultural clients, and you turn down a potential 101st client because the CEO of the company happens to be gay. You can't do that. And I say, <clears throat> I say you can't do that. You can't do that and it be known that that's the reason you do it. You know, if the reason is never known, then, I mean, who's the wiser? You're just an, an evil bastard at that point. <laughs> but uh, you, can't, you can't do that because you made a choice when you got into business. And just like these cases with the bakers, T-shirt makers, things like that, you provide a product and a service to the general public. You do not have the right to, to state, well, my religious conviction doesn't allow me to bake a cake for you two because you happen to be the same sex and you're getting married. I'm sorry. You have just broken the law. You have just broken the anti-discrimination laws. And then what happens is because said person decides, well, you know, my rights are being violated because I have the right of, to, to worship however I want. Yes, you do. Absolutely, you have that, that right in your home or anything that doesn't directly relate to you discriminating against someone else because of the fact that either A, they don't believe in the same way you believe, or they're doing something that, that you don't agree with because of some scripture in a book. You know, you're, you're not, it, there, there is no war on Christians. There is no war on Christianity. I made this comment to a Facebook friend this morning. He may not be my friend any longer. I don't know, but uh, I said, there, there is no war on Christians. There's no war on Christianity. What it is is Christians are now realizing that the general populace is going through an awakening and realizing that organized religion is really nothing more than a, a methodology of control. It's a method of control. 
And people were waking up and figuring out that, you know, this one thing here is not like these others, okay? Uh, why, why does this have to be so difficult to understand? There should never be, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, laws, bills that are brought up in legislature that are debated, voted on, sent to be signed into law, whether by a governor or the president of the United States, should never have any religious influence at all. None. Because the laws are the laws of man. These laws are there to protect everyone. Everyone equally. Unfortunately, when a law is designed and has a very religious slant or influence on it, it is no longer a law that can be applied equally to everyone. That is the reason why no law should ever be passed under the influence of any type of religious doctrine. It's easy to say. I I get that. It's, it's, It's just as easy to say that we shouldn't have lobbyists in Washington. I completely agree with that. We should not have lobbyists in Washington because, unfortunately, what happens is lobbyists, they're well-funded, they make backroom deals, and suddenly we have laws in place that, unfortunately, only benefit a segment of the population. Therefore, the law cannot be applied equally. Same situation with laws that are influenced by religion. So, I don't know, man. It's uh, I'm 46, and I think I, I think at this age, I'm be, I'm beginning to understand the world less and less and less. None of it makes sense to me anymore. Some of these solutions just seem so boneheaded simple, and then people make them complicated. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I think that's where I'm gonna wrap it up. On this fine Friday down here in South Central Georgia, it's uh, approximately like 60 or 65 degrees, kind of cloudy. Looks like we're going to have rain all weekend. So everyone, you you take care of yourselves. We'll be back next week to talk about the latest in the news. This has been News and Views for Friday, March 18th, 2016. I'm Don Adkisson. <laughs>